Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Ariane Fodvo. I'm an assistant professor of management here at UTA since 2019, and I am teaching human resource management. So today I would like to talk to you about my research area, and I'm very excited about uh, helping to address such an important challenge as the aging of the population. And at work in management, it means basically how can we help all the workers not only be productive and happy at work, but also transition smoothly into retirement and find, again, some well-being and happiness as they transition. So my research in the first area at work is interested in what are the HRM practices that we can set up to help them uh, be happier and more productive. So there is basically two practices you can use. The first is called uh, age-specific practices. It means you really target those older workers. That could be, for instance, training uh, in terms of retirement planning. But there's also a different type of practices that's called um, age-neutral practices, meaning that you can address something for all the workers in a way that can also help other workers, younger workers. For instance, if you're interested in setting up a flex time for your workers because they may need to rest uh, longer than uh, just working full time. So you may be thinking of your older workers, but maybe younger workers, such as people with families, may be interested in that flex time opportunity. So it's usually a good way to think about it because um, the risk if you only focus on all the workers is that you start to stigmatize that group basically you're giving a signal that these people need help that there's a this is a vulnerability a vulnerable group and this has come up in research that some people have felt discriminated against due to these practices so you want to be very uh, careful about how you implement that and implementing that with age neutral practices is a good way because it helps you to address these things without uh, having to uh, show some possible stigmatization that you don't want uh, to have. My second research area is interested in how people transition from work to retirement. I'm interested in how people use their resources. This comes from positive psychology where I, I focus on what goes well, what people already do to go to do things well, rather than look at uh, mental health issues or difficulties they may be facing. So my research has shown that there are uh, basically four resources that are extremely important. The first one is just relationships. Relationships are everywhere and that's really key. It could be partners, but also family in general, or just friends if people are not so close with their families. And it's not only that these people help you, that they provide you with information, advice as you transition to retirement. It's all that these people allow you to feel useful because you can contribute helping them. And I have research on the notion of mattering, meaning feeling that you are important to other people. Um, and this is actually extremely important, especially as people age. So this is why social resources are really the most important ones. Very important too is obviously what I called uh, life conditions resources, meaning your health and your finances. So the question, can you afford to retire? And can you take advantage of all the different activities physically, uh, with some accommodations maybe if you need to. The third very important element resources that uh, came, from, came up in my work is how, what I called individuality. So basically anything that's specific to you as an individual. So it could be, for instance, ways through which you cope with difficulties. And as people age, they have gained a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience how uh, to deal with lots of different uh, situations in their life. So how they can use these to, to adjust. Another example is proactive personality. So my research shows that proactive people uh, have an easier time to adjust to retirement because they not only plan ahead what is going to happen, doesn't come as a surprise, but they also frame those changes, not as an uncertainty and a source of stress, but rather as an opportunity to grow, to learn. So that's why they, they usually uh, adjust better. The last but not least very important resource I found is about time management. So it's basically about before people were managed, that time was managed because you had to show up to work from nine to five. You don't have to ask yourself questions. Same about your relationships. You would go to your work and you would just meet with coworkers. So you would have socialization, sharing, maybe jokes and some fun with others. Well, all the things 
just disappear because you're retired. So you know you have to be proactive and think, what are some activities you want to do that are meaningful, not only in themselves, because they bring you enjoyment in the moment, but also where you will be able to meet like-minded people people who can become new friends, especially if you moved or if you just have lost contact with your former coworkers. So these time issues are very important. So which activities and also how to find a good balance. So structure your time, but also enjoy your time off, a time to slow down and not being too busy with lots of commitments because most of the time the society or uh, people close to us have a lot of ideas how we could spend our time. So the question is, how do you want to spend uh, your time in retirement? All right, so this is it uh, for now. I, have, I hope to have the pleasure uh, of meeting you in the future very soon. Bye.